Just wanted to give a quick note on this video. I shot it uh, about two years ago and then forgot about it and just recently found it on my video camera. So I'm getting it edited and uploaded now and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, give it a thumbs up. Hope it comes in handy for someone. You ever had one of those bug lights? The, you know the kind that you hang in your yard. Fluorescent light bulb costs $25 each. And bugs come along, fly towards the light, get electrocuted. You have it for a couple of years, replace the bulbs a few times, and then eventually you replace the bulb and it still doesn't light up. So, what do you do? Toss it in the trash. Today we're going to learn how to repurpose those lights, bring them back to life, for less than the cost of replacing a single bulb. What we have here today is a Stinger model UV801. This one here has had its bulbs replaced. Other YouTube videos show you how to replace the starter inside to get the bulbs back to life. Well, this method doesn't involve replacing the starters in fact, it doesn't involve replacing the bulbs at all. Instead, we're going to junk the $25 bulbs and we're going to go with an option to bring the bug light back to life for half the price. So if you turn the bug light over, you find the screws that you'd normally remove to replace the bulbs. This particular model has four screws, one on each side. I originally devised this method when I was looking for a solution after a friend had given me a couple of bug lights to tinker with that he was throwing in the garbage. He replaces his bug lights, or has been replacing them, about every two to three years. When the life of the bulb gives out, he replaces the bulb for $25. When the bulbs don't light up anymore, he's been stacking them in a corner. When he has a five or six of them, he hauls them off all off to the dump at once. Both bulbs out. Always keep in mind, we're dealing with electricity. Do not have it plugged in while you're working on it. Should be common sense. Some people do not have common sense. So now once we have the bulbs out, the cover off, we're going to turn, put the cover back on, and this is so that we can turn it back over and access the circuitry. Now what's handy is keep a couple of boards handy to set the top of the bug light on, because it has this odd shape, it won't sit flat. It's easier if you prop it on the sides, then you can stand it up and work on it. When you're standing it upright, you don't necessarily need the boards, so we'll move them aside. At this point, the top comes off. All the circuitry still sets here. A lot of bugs dead. Here's the starters that are inside the bug light. This starter here I've replaced for him several times. And at this point, Replacing the starters, replacing the bulbs, over and over, becomes quite costly. That's the starter that's dead. It goes in the garbage, along with the dead bulb. This is the good starter. These are the same types of starters, and if you just wiggle them, they'll usually come right out. These are the same types of starters that you find inside of your fluorescent starters that you buy at the hardware store that are of the round variety that you 
stick in and twist click into place for your smaller fluorescent lights. If you break it open, that's what you find inside. So the next step in the conversion is to look at where your wires are at. You'll notice a black and a white wire on this particular model, both connected up to a transformer. We're going to take the black wires and cut them off of the connector. There are three transformers inside. Two of them power the fluorescent lights, one for each. The other one powers the high voltage circuit for the electrocution coil. We're going to keep track of where our wires go by keeping them together as we disconnect them. So we'll just give them a little twist here. That way they stay together. The second wire, the white wire, is also connected to a black wire, which goes to the high voltage transformer. That one we also pull out, and we'll twist it together. At this point, our fluorescent circuit is now dead. It's disconnected from electricity. In the top here, We have two little plastic clips that form the bases for the fluorescent bulbs. They're spring clips, and if you press outwards on them, the whole clip will just drop right through. Comes loose, drops down inside. Cut the wire off at the base of the clips. and drop out the connector. That leaves this wire here completely disconnected. The secondary wire, which fed voltage to the transformers to energize the fluorescent circuit, is still connected. We don't need these wires anymore. We're not going to use the transformers here except as ballast for the light. On my first experiment with this, I took them out. My light hung crooked. So, they don't serve any purpose other than ballast. We'll leave them in. But we'll cut the wires off of the transformer. We'll use these wires later in the conversion process. Now we have two fluorescent connectors that the bulbs plugged into. They will also go to the garbage. Now what we're going to use to run our conversion on this system are some common, easy to acquire parts. If you buy everything new at your local home construction store or hardware store, It'll cost you maybe $12 to $15. If you're resourceful, you can salvage the uh, conversion mountings, then all you're paying for is the cost of the bulb. What we're going to do is we're going to take a typical lamp screw-in light socket and a $7 screw-in black light bulb, 13 watts, that's all it is. The reason we have to go with black light is black light emits ultraviolet light. And it's the ultraviolet light being produced by the fluorescent bulbs that attracts the bugs. It's not the light itself, it's the frequency of light. When you look at your circuit, you'll notice that there is a knob right in the center between where the two connectors went. Now, some fluorescent lamps only have one bulb in it in which case the electrocution grid is smaller and you have a little bit less room to work. What we want to do is we want to drill a hole 
right in the center of that knob that will fit the stem that the fixture screws into in order to be able to mount our fixture inside of the casing. Now I'm going to pause the video, do the drilling, and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, now we have our drill hole drilled right in the center. That's going to hold our light. We're going to set the fixture aside for a moment while we wire up the light and get it ready. You can buy lamp fixtures, like I said, at just about any of your home supply stores or your hardware stores. The parts are not that expensive. They typically go for, I don't know, $2 for the fixture. You can buy a whole package of different sized uh, nipples that screw into the base for just a couple dollars. A couple of washers, enough to hold it all together. Not that difficult. This one is a salvage item. Came out of a lamp someone threw in the garbage. All we're going to do is pop it apart. Get a screwdriver here. Pop the base off. Sometimes easier said than done. Now I've done this conversion. This is the fifth one I've done so far. Everyone has turned out well. Everyone has worked. The last two I did, the uh, sockets we bought at the uh, hardware store, we accidentally got three-way switches. Not a big deal. Just have to turn it two clicks to turn it on. Two clicks. Once it's turned on, you'll leave it on all the time. So once you get your fixture apart, the core of the circuit has your connectors for connecting your wires. In this case, white is the hot wire, or correction. Yeah, white is hot, and the uh, gold wire is the neutral. Once your fixture is together, you'll switch it on, and you'll leave it be. You'll never have to turn it off again, because when you plug the bug light in, the light will automatically come on. Now we're going to repurpose the wires we saved. to wire our fixture up. Cut them off the connector, strip the ends, And you can use one different colored wires if you want, that way you're keeping track of which is which. I like to just take a black sharpie and mark the black wire. That way when I put it back in the lamp, I know which wire goes where. Give the ends of the wire a twist, makes them easier to stay together, they don't fray, they connect up easier. If you do any wiring at all, you know when connecting it to a screw, hook, bend it into a hook, tighten the screw down around it. If you don't know what you're doing with electricity, I don't recommend trying this experiment. Get someone who knows what they're doing to help you out.
always remember, if you don't know what you're doing, voltage does kill. And these bug lights, through the high voltage circuit, put out about 50,000 volts. Okay, wires are together. We're going to drop the socket back inside. Now notice there's a little cardboard insert in here. If you want to keep that insert in there, that is an insulator. It prevents the terminals of the wires from grounding out against the body of the lamp socket itself. Run the wires through the hole in the cap. Line it up and snap it back together. Halfway there. Slide the nipple onto the wires. And thread it into the socket. Now you don't have to thread it till it stops. Tension on this nipple itself will be provided by the nut we put on it. I'm going to use the washer on both sides simply because I like the fact that the washer on both sides provides more tension and greater strength than the plastic itself. This washer itself was actually part of the light fixture as well, the lamp that it came from. Now our socket is wired, bring it back up reach inside of the high voltage coils and stick the socket through the hole. And I stuck it through the wrong hole. Thought it was a little bit loose. That's what happens when you get in a hurry. Take your time anytime you do a project. Get it right the first time. You'll be happier. Then put the washer on. Take your nut. Drop it over. And thread it on the nipple. Now you don't have to have an extremely short nipple like the one I'm using here. You've got as much room inside here for the length of the nipple as you have under the hood of the bug light itself. But I see no need to use a longer nipple when a short one works. You can use a longer nipple as well if you want to lower the lamp inside the light fixture I found that the higher the light is inside the light fixture, the more effective it is at drawing the bugs into the coil. If the light is lower, the entire top half of the coil tends to be missed by the bugs that are flying into the light. Now I'm just going to hang on to the light fixture while I tighten down the nut here. Make it nice and tight, but not so tight that you strip out the threads on the nut. Now that light fixture will support the weight of the transformers if you hold on to it. Nice and snug, all ready to go. Now we're ready to reconnect our wires. You can use any number of methods for reconnecting the wires. Personally, I just like going with a couple of wire nuts. They're easy to work with, easy to handle. And as long as you get your wires twisted properly, you have good connection every time. You can solder the wires if that makes you happy. It's not absolutely necessary. And we're doing the 
white wire first. So we use the mark the lead that we did not mark. Twist the wires together. Put the wire nut on. Twist it down till it's tight and the wires are actually twisting together. Same thing with the hot leads. Give them a little twist. Put the wire nut on. Now we're done. Want to tighten down? We'll pull the wires apart. Make sure that they're all twisting together properly. Making sure your connections are good is the most probably the Second most important thing about this whole project. First most, like I said, safety. Make sure you're not working with a device that has electricity supplied to it. Strip a little bit more wire here. I don't think I had quite enough. And you'll know your wire nuts tight because the wires themselves will twist themselves together. That done. Tuck your wires down out of the way. And put the top back on. At this point, Lay your boards out so you can flip the light back, back over. Now this bulb's a GE Energy Smart. They call it a uh, black light party bulb. All it is is a CFL black light. CFL compact fluorescent light. Thread it into the socket, put the cover back on, and turn it back over. Now, before we put the screws in, We need to make sure that we have the switch in the correct position. For that, all we're going to do is run the extension cord up here and plug it in. The bulb did not come on. Switch is off. Turn it back over. Reach down inside and flip the switch. You really don't have to turn it over to actually plug it in. As long as you get the cover on it for safety purposes, you're good to go. Presto. Light came on. Now we have a converted bug light. The high voltage transformer still energizes the circuit. It'll still electrocute the bugs, but we're no longer paying 25 plus 25 dollars to attract the bugs. Instead, we're paying seven dollars to attract the bugs. And when the bulb goes dead, you just replace the seven dollar bulb instead of the $25 bulb, and you never have to worry about whether the starter that you pulled out of there is dead or not. 
that's our black light, our bug light conversion. Hope it helps you out. Like to see these things popping up all over the place. Have a great day.